So what keeps people reading a series like this? Is there really just a massive readership hungry to watch characters lose? Eager for more bloodshed and tragedy? Or is it something else? Today, I want to answer one question about the grim, dark genre. What keeps us reading when it's too dark to go on? What is it that brings us back time and time again? And I'm going to use one of the best authors around at doing this to figure out why. So grab a cup of coffee, hit that like button, and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Let's jump into it. Joe Abercrombie's first law series is the poster boy for the grim, dark genre. It contains all of the staples that you would expect. In this series, we follow a somewhat large cast of viewpoint characters across an entire fictional world. They'll be fighting wars and treachery on pretty much every single front and getting kicked in the face in the process more times than we'll ever be able to count. But for each of our protagonists, if you can call them that, their greatest enemy is always themselves. This series is relentless. Around every corner, Abercrombie will lure you on with hopes of something good finally happening or seeing a character finally purified. But as you come to round those corners, you never cease to get cracked over the head with a brick. To say that this trilogy is subversive would be an understatement. There are times in which it almost feels like too much, but this series is nothing if not true to its roots. So what keeps people reading a series like this? Is there really just a massive readership hungry to watch characters lose? Eager for more bloodshed and tragedy? Or is it something else? The grimdark genre walks a fine line. At its heart, it's often about reaching down through the muck to the heart of realism. Often through a nihilistic lens on society. Bad people don't always get what they've got coming, and good people often suffer more than we ever wanted to see. In a grimdark world, justice is rare and few characters are ever truly pure. Grimdark is essentially a big muddy gray area. Abercrombie succeeds here because he understands the measures of light and dark that are needed to allow a reader to be endeared to a character, to make them feel real, to allow them to do awful things yet still have the reader following them. He so efficiently paints characters that commit horrible acts, but consistently gives them the time and care to bring us around to understanding why they are the way that they are. By the time you're on the third book in the series, there are about six viewpoint characters, and you still might not really be sure who the good guys actually are. Or better yet, where in the world this story is actually going to end up. It really is impossible to predict what side these characters are going to fall on by the end of the series. I think Abercrombie's notion was to dissolve the idea of having any sides at all. Sometimes Abercrombie's message comes through the strongest and one of our more seemingly lovable characters in Logan Ninefingers, where his mantra repeats throughout the book as he's kicked out of the frying pan, into the fire, then into the volcano, then hell itself, time after time after time. Yet, after every harrowing encounter, he whispers to himself, still alive. Society in these books is about staying alive. For most of the characters, they can't afford to do anything else. In a world this cruel, there's little time to worry about right and wrong. Another sentiment rings throughout the book in the way that Logan constantly tells himself and others, you have to be realistic about these things. And that's really what lies at the heart of this series. None of these characters were chosen by gods. They aren't destined for heroism or glory, and their hearts certainly aren't pure. Sometimes the future for these characters seems so grim that you might ask yourself, why do you even keep reading? That's really what I want to figure out. Why do we fall in love with the darkness? This series will have you following a character, investing yourself in their coming redemption, then swipe it out from under you. It's almost never satisfying. The books are unpredictable almost to a fault. And by the third book, you might just be predicting the unpredictable and assuming that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. But the story being unpredictable isn't what keeps us on our toes. Frankly, some of the turns that these books take are infuriating or deeply disappointing. So why do we keep going at all? I think it's because despite our disgust at the filth of these characters, we see a morsel of truth in them. Maybe even a piece of ourselves, or worse, someone that we've known in our own lives. 
This also goes for the plot. When we're led to believe in arcs that ultimately let us down, it's almost cathartic. We might have been conditioned by other genres to expect the heroes to win, to get behind the purity of the good guys. But when these books subvert those notions, we find ourselves nodding along, repeating Logan's mantra. Well, you have to be realistic about these things. Not only do these books condition you to the outlooks of these characters, they also ensure that every beat still contains a certain human element. We come in expecting all the usual tropes of epic fantasy novels, but we're given these half-eaten, burnt pieces of reality. We might resist admitting their relatability, but we keep reading anyway, because deep down, something's resonating. When another of our viewpoint characters, the Dogman, says, Mercy and weakness are the same thing in war, and there's no prizes for nice behavior. He'd learned this from Bethod a long time ago. We find ourselves agreeing, because we've watched this plot unfold. And in this world, everything he says rings true with what we've learned. It's sentiments like this one that echo through every single chapter, falling out of pretty much every character's mouth. There may be a readership for Grimdark that's just thirsty for bloodshed and nihilism, but few things are ever so simple. Abercrombie never fails to remind us that the real world is rarely ever like the epic tales that we've been told. And in his world, many of those epic tales of heroism end up being flat out lies. Lies told by powerful people simply to gain even more power. Characters rise to power through half-truths or outright lies, and no one is rewarded for integrity. We keep reading this series because it contains an addictive substance, one that hurts and disappoints us time and time again. We return because we hate to admit it, but we're sort of masochists. Relatability carries the heart of any great book, and the First Law series drives that nail home. In this series, our characters recognize their flaws, but sob at their inability to change, to break free from the cycles that have held them down. But often, it turns out that they aren't the ones in control. And that gives us, as readers, a cop-out. It may even speak to our own nature. It's a victimhood complex masked in empathy. Abercrombie begs the question, do people ever really change? Logan Ninefingers once asks, Tell me, Furious. Do you reckon a man has to pay for the things he's done? It's these themes that make this series come off so strong. There's a backbone of hard questions topped with characters that are so flawed and vile that you have no choice but to just pity them. I think that's it. We read these books in the same way that we listen to sad songs. We become addicted to the connections that we make with pain. Thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a subscribe on the channel and check back here for more content every single week. I will see you guys in the next one.